What up, what up, what up, what up? It's me, L Teddy 27. Good as night, dude. Right about the hood. Oh, dear God. I'm already eating a drink. Look at the damn mess. Just a damn mess. Please no. And yes, please no. What up, 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 what's good, people, what's up, it's me, I'm back, I'm L Teddy 27 y'all know who I am, it's somewhere around me, somewhere, I'm L Teddy 27 and I'm back, and we're here for another review, this is going to be our review for Real, The Real Housewives of Potomac, season five, season five, episode ten, I believe this is like a mid-season finale or something like that, it is entitled Sorry Not Sorry, okay, so a lot of fuck shit, fuckery and fucktitude during this episode, so let's just get right down to it, um, so we start off, it's five days after the uh, fight or whatnot between Candace and Monique. So you see Candace at her house cleaning up, saying that she's still having um, post-traumatic stress. She's still having trauma. Uh, I mean, stress and, you know, after the event and the trauma of it all. And so um, so she's talking about that. She Then we see Monique. She's talking about, you know, she don't remember what happened and this, that, and the third. She wants to have a get-together between the girls with the, with the ladies sans Candace, of course. So she calls um, because she wants to figure out what's happening because she only remembers bits and pieces of what's happening. She, uh, she called Karen, tell Karen to put together an event for the ladies to get together to talk about this so she can figure out what happened. And she can discuss it with them. Y'all see where I'm going with this whole review already, right? So Karen um, puts it together. She um, So she got it all put together. The ladies are on their way over. Now, Karen, 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 you ain't fooling nobody. I'm like Robin. You almost had me, Karen. You ain't fooling nobody, Karen. Mm -mm. Because how you gonna call... Candace, when the ladies are already on their way to your house, talk about, oh, we're having an event this morning. And I wanted you to have an opportunity to talk to the ladies. And I wanted you to have an opportunity, just like Monique has the opportunity to talk to them. You should as well. What bitch you think you should have maybe told her before people were already showing up? You don't know what this lady got going on. She, When you call her, she said, she told you, I'm on my way to therapy. I, You know, what's going on? Don't try to cloak this under the guise of, because she'll try to spin it as, well, I did try to include Candace. I tried to make sure I did the right thing and both parties were involved. No, you didn't, whore. Because if you did, when Monique called you and said that, what you would have did was said, you know what, Monique, that's a great idea. And when you, when you're, what I, what I, but what I want to do is I want to make it fair. So I'll have you come in and talk to the ladies. You can leave. And then we'll have um, Candace come in and talk to the ladies as well, because I think that that's the most fair. And I'm both of your friends. And then when you hung up the phone with Monique, then you would have called Candace and told Candace, hey, um, this is what I want to do and spelled all of that out. But you didn't do that because you ain't shit. Karen, I see through you and your bullshit, Karen. Uh-uh, I wasn't buying it. You gonna call this lady and the people already over to your house and she told you she on her way to therapy. Girl, keep it, honey. Anyway, so they at this meetup, this talking to that they're gonna have at um Karen's house. Giselle comes first. She brings us security. Child. <laughs> I mean, let's just be clear. Giselle, you were here for all of the fuckery, okay? You are really playing this up for the cameras, Giselle. Let's just be clear. If we are at an event to talk about or come away from the fight, there's no way, shape, form, or fashion you thought that Monique was going to come to this event and try to fight somebody. You were in no fear, no real fear or danger of anybody attacking you, and you knew that. But you played it up for the TV and the cameras, bringing this ugly man in there. Talk about that's my security. Child. Girl, girl, Giselle, get your life in order. Anyway, uh, all be now, Monique ain't there yet. So the ladies start to arrive. So they find out that Monique has been very busy on social media since it talk about ask and you shall receive leaking stories to her friends so they can go leak it to the blogs or whatever and so forth. And um, because they found out that the I think the fight they said was on when the fight was on a Wednesday. There was nothing in the blogs for two days, Thursday or Friday. And then on the weekend, that's when it leaked like two, three days afterwards. It was like two days in between the fight and when the story leaked. So 
the ladies, um, they talk about, you know, how this is a bad look for black women and this isn't what they wanted to see for this, um, I guess for the show, or, but for, you know, black women and this is a bad portrayal of black women and she is a daughter and she needs to think about the fact that she is a daughter and this is not a good look for her as a mother for a daughter or for a black woman, period, as a daughter. Now, I'm going to back away from that whole part of it because, hello, black man not black women. So I can't speak to how or how a black woman should feel about this, should not feel about this, how this affects black women, because I don't care how I try to spin it or how much I talk about it. I'm never going to understand because I'm not a black woman. I can only see it through the guise of how other black women um, portray it to me or how they see it. So I'll let y'all argue that. Y'all can argue about that in the comment section about this as a portrayal of black women and because Ashley came right out and says oh it seems this is unfair because we don't hold black men to the same standard and this that, and the third and oh my god that uh, Monique should be held to the same standard I think it's not fair for you to even speak on this Ashley seeing this out you weren't even there you didn't even witness all of this okay you saw none of it and even if you watched it on tape afterward it's a very different feel of when you're in the room because watching it isn't the same as being there because a room has an atmosphere and you can feel tensions and you can feel emotions in a room you are there, Ashley you don't know like you said you was in the bathroom after you conveniently plugged that little part into get the fight started we, know, we remember, remember that you were the one that planted the seat to get this fight started Ashley okay and because they were getting on you and your husband and y'all um thruples that y'all have, you and your husband, y'all threesomes and thruples that y'all had. You wanted to get the ladies off your back and your raggedy ass husband back. And so you planted this seat, you know, expeditiously and conveniently went to the bathroom. A mess. A mess. So I'll let y'all black women parcel that out. Anyway, while this is going on, Candace goes to therapy. She sits down with her therapy therapist. Now, I will say. From what Candace was saying to her therapist, she did not hold anything back. She didn't try to paint it, paint it as oh, only showing, um, only telling parts of what she did. She did tell the um therapist all. She was very open with the therapist. She did tell the therapist all the parts that she played, all the things that she did. I must commend Candace for that because she didn't hold anything back. Back down to this meetup, Monique finally arrives. Monique is in the sand. Oh, listen. Can we talk about one thing? First of all, Monique, you and your little crocodile tears are not going to work for me, okay? Uh-uh. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm not buying the tears. These tears go on. I, listen, y'all know I break out into these tears, okay? Shots out to the group heart for these dreams. But these tears go on when I close my eyes. Come on now. Nobody believes um, those tears. Girl, then she starts talking about, oh, this is not me, and I'm so, this is just not me, this is not the type of person that I am, and I'm so upset that people are thinking that I'm this type of person, and this is how it came out. Hey, bitch, hey, whore, you were the one last episode bragging that you have been like this going back to high school, how you was that girl that was ready to nut if you buck at any occasion, that you was here for it, that a bitch couldn't see it for you, that all of this, that, and the third. You had all this rah, rah, rah last episode explaining to us how you've been like this all your life. Now, all of a sudden, this ain't you. Now, you backpedaling and pussy popping off of it. A mess. I did, I'm not, mm-mm, nope. Mm -mm. Try again, sweetheart. You told us with your own mouth. That that is who you are. Girl, we're not here for it. Then she says she couldn't remember um immediately afterward what happened because she blacked out and this, that, and the third. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. Because they went back and rolled the tapes back, whore, and told you that you spelled out punch by punch, drag by drag, exactly what you did to her. How the producers tried to get you off with this hand, you grabbed her with the other hand. No, y'all didn't do this. Y'all did that. And I did this to make sure that y'all couldn't stop me. You knew what you were doing. You're a liar. You're a liar. You are a liar. Why you always lying? Lying. Mm, my God. Why you always lying? Girl, you're lying. Girl, you're lying. A mess. A mess. Anyway, I mean, it, baby, can I tell y'all 
Robin must have been channeling Crimson and Cream Love through me. Okay, Robin being a Delta, me being a Kappa, Crimson and Cream Love. When I tell you I was Robin this whole time, if y'all want to know how I would have reacted, what I would have been doing, how I would have been looking, the faces I would have been make, making, look at Robin. Because I would have been Robin the whole time. Baby, when Robin said, so let me, a few things. You almost had me. Baby, when Robin said that, I fell out. I, I had to pause. I had to pause the show. I had to completely fell the fuck out. I said, yes. She was like, girl. Girl, what? You almost had me. I was like, yes, Robin. I was here for Robin. I was here. Because, baby, the whole time, Robin looking at her like, girl. 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 Girl, you really want us to. Girl, you almost had me. I was here for what, Robin. I died, honey. The women, listen, then they started um, to try to hold Monique accountable, at least some of them did, um, for what she did. The fact that it doesn't matter how much Candace said something verbally, you can't put your hands up. And let me let me take about a good 38 seconds to talk about this. I know this is a lot of people that have a lot of things to say about Oh, if she kept asking for the smoke, and if you keep asking me for the smoke, then I'm going to give you the smoke. Let me turn that on its head. Because human beings are human beings and people are people. Imagine if Monique was a man. And Candace was doing the same thing. Drag me. Drag me. Y'all know how many instances you see a situation between a man and a woman, and a woman keeps saying, oh, I dare you to hit me. Oh, you won't hit me, da 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 The whole time, what is everybody saying? Oh, he a man. He can't hit that woman. Why? Because as human beings, we expect that I don't care what somebody says, you should not put your hands on them. If Monique had drugged her, and Monique was a man named Marcus, we wouldn't even be having this argument. 98.9% .9 of the people here would be saying, yeah, Monique, Marcus was wrong for dragging Candace like that. Human beings are human beings, and all human beings should be held accountable to the same standard. Meaning, if a man should put his hand on a woman, even if a woman begs him to um, beat her down, same way a woman shouldn't put her hands on another woman, even if that other woman is begging her to put her hands on her and beat her down. Can't do it. Shouldn't do it. Sorry. Mm-mm. That is, and watch this. I'm going to have the people in my comments talk about, well, it's different for men. Men can't never hit a woman, da, 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 da. And them going to be the same people who, when Tahiri had to fight with, uh, when Tahiri's boyfriend drug her on marriage boot camp, they were saying that he was right for hitting her. See, y'all don't keep it for y'all. Y'all talk on uh, both sides of your neck. Make it make sense. Come on now. Come on. Anyway, um, the, the, the women pretty much was not here for it. Ashley act like she was here for, but like I said, Ashley, I don't, I don't, I'm not going with whatever Ashley is, has to say, because Ashley, you were not there. So your experience or what you have to say is not the same or is not equated to the other women that were there in that room at the time. You came in the aftermath. So I ain't even trying to hear what Ashley got to say. Karen, I already told y'all, Karen wants to make it like she's neutral. That whore is not neutral at all. We already see where she's going with this. We already see, just like she said, Giselle came in there with her mind made up. Karen came in there with her mind made up too. Giselle, so we see Ashley back, I mean Monique back at, not Monique, damn. Candace back at therapy. Now her therapist did try to hold her accountable. Her therapist was saying, well, what did you play into it? Is there anything that you did that could have caused this physical altercation to happen? How could you have, you know, prevented it? He was trying to hold her to task and hold her accountable for what she, part that she played in it. So I did, I liked the therapy session with um, that guy. Great, you know, infomercial for him and his um, practice because he probably gonna get a couple uh, more people to um, come to his practice. But I like the job that the therapist did. Back down to the little meetup or whatever. Baby, Monique trying to. They finally got Monique to uh, admit she she would do it again. She has no remorse. She's not sorry for what happened. She's just sorry that it went on camera. Period. Because by her saying, I'm embarrassed, that doesn't mean that you didn't want it to happen. That means you just embarrassed that people get to see it happening. That means that it would happen again, if given the chance. You just told us that. A mess. A mess. They also got her to, and I don't think she realized, to give up that she did feed that story to the blogs when she went and talked to her friend about it. Because she said, well, I just talked to one person. It was two days later. And Wendy got right on it. Bitch, that adds up with the timeline. Exactly. So it was you. You are the one who um, are the reason that that story got out there. 
a mess. A mess. And she said, oh, yeah, I put that on my social media. I was talking about her and I meant every word of it. And she was like, oh, yeah, I'm a whole week out of it. But I, my adrenaline's still pumping. And if that bitch came her ass in here right now, I might drag her ass again. Now, Monique, child, not Monique, now, Giselle, this one was played up for the cameras for real. Giselle, we're not buying you. And then you try to get in your confessional and talk about me and Jamal. Who are Jamal is a passing child. You don't care that much about your image with Jamal because he's sleeping with everything in the greater Atlanta area, okay? He has his own wing in the Center for Disease Control with that Petri dish of things he probably got running through him after running through the streets of Atlanta, dear God. That's a whole nother story. I wasn't here for you, Giselle. But I was, like I said, I was robbing the entire time because I would have been with Robin. I ain't leaving. I need to hear exactly everything you said. And Robin was the one who called it out. When everybody let Monique sit there and talk, Monique said what she wanted to say uninterrupted. Robin did interrupt that one time, but then they stopped Robin and they ain't interrupt Monique no more. When Robin started talking, now you got Monique interrupted over and over and over and over. When other people were talking, you when Rob, uh, not with Robin, when Giselle was talking, Monique was interrupted over and over and over and over. When Robin was talking, Monique started interrupting again over and over and over and over. It doesn't work like that. And I was with Robin. When Robin called Karen out, hey, Karen, you need to stop this. This is your event. And then Karen said, get something, tries to shut everybody up. Like she shut everybody down. No, you should have had that smoke from Monique. Now you trying to throw your weight around to everybody. Where was this weight when she was over here interrupting everybody? Karen, see, that's how I told y'all. Karen, you ain't fooling nobody. You ain't shit either. Monique starts crying all these tears. These tears go on, child. These tears, honey. These tears, Monique. I, I did not buy a single one of those tears. It was rehearsed. It was practiced. Girl, you was in your rearview mirror on the way there practicing how you was going to make it happen. Girl, I don't buy it. I'm not here for it. Child, anybody who, when you start crying, before the first tear can run down, you already wiping your eyes. Uh-uh. When you cry for real, you doing this. You wiping the tear because the tears have already come down. You're not soon as something. Oh, wait. Ain't nothing enough for you to wipe, boo. You ain't crying. Bitch, you just squeeze your eyes real hard to make them look a little red. Girl, I don't buy you. Try again, honey. Anyway, this whole meetup further. May, and then she be like, well, maybe I shouldn't be around you all anymore. Maybe you shouldn't. Bye, girl. Okay. Bye. Maybe you shouldn't. I would if When she said I would have been like, maybe you shouldn't. It's been real. It's been nice. But please understand, we don't need this to happen no more. And you just told us that it might happen again. Because now you're asking us to make a choice. Really, what she was doing was when she said, I still got smoke for Candace. I still can't be in a room with Candace. So you ask these ladies to make a choice when they go out. Are we going to have Candace or are we going to make have Monique there? Because obviously we can't have y'all in the same room. And that's not fair. So, right, you should take a break. Go ahead. Get your life in order. That way we don't have to try and figure out who we're going to have going on these events with us or going to things with us. Anyway, not saying Candace is completely absolved of anything that she's done, but Monique, you are being more and more wrong in all of this situation, and I don't believe nothing you got to say. Nothing. You are a whole level brand of fuckery. That was the whole episode, y'all. I don't know what y'all think. Y'all know y'all gonna get in the comment section and tell me how y'all think it. Well, I'm here for it. I'm here to argue, argue about what we saw, how you saw it, and how you see it. But it was what it was. A mess. A damn mess. That's all I got for y'all. Until next time. I don't know if it's coming on next week or they taking a little light break. I don't know what's gonna happen. But when it comes back, we'll be back. Until then, thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely. We out.